So let's do a little hypothesis testing example. Assume you are a taxi uh, entrepreneur. So you have several cars and uh, your drivers, you, um, drivers work for you. And you're, of course, very concerned about keeping your drivers. And otherwise, they would be uh, going perhaps to other firms. So what you really want is that your drivers earn per hour on average 20 pounds. Uh, so this is this is what you want to achieve and you want to check is that is that actually is that actually right so let's call a random variable q which is the hourly hourly earnings of your taxi drivers and let's say from long years of running this business you you have a lot of experience you know that the variance of q is equal to 9 so the standard deviation is at sigma squared. That means the standard deviation is three. Yeah. So what you now want to do is you want to test the null hypothesis that mu, the expected value of Q, that is mu, that that is equal to 20. And you're particularly concerned about and therefore that goes into the null hypothesis that mu may be smaller than 20 because then you fear that your drivers will be leaving you. And let's say you want to run a hypothesis test at a significance level of 1%. So what does that mean? That means that we accept that there will be a 1% probability of making a type 1 error, meaning rejecting a correct null hypothesis. So let's think about the decision rule. Before we actually think about the decision rule, we will um, need to think about the uh, test statistic and its distribution. So what we will do is we will have a sample of 60 60 drivers who the taxi entrepreneur says okay in your third hour of your shift tell me how much you earn and we will get from that a sample mean right? and I'll leave that open what this is going to be so we are thinking of a random variable q bar which is the sample average. And we need to think about how this is distributed. So using the central limit theorem, because I don't tell you anything about the type of distribution, I'll say it's approximately normally distributed. We are having a sample size of 60, so we're in be this sort of a fairly confident uh, sample size. So the variance of that q bar is going to be the variance of q divided by n so in our case that is going to be the variance of q is 9 divided by 60 and if you calculate that you will get 0.15 so that's the variance so what is going to be the the expected value of that distribution well what we do is we take our assumed h naught value and plug this in here so that's of course important we're only assuming that under if the null hypothesis is valid that will be the sample distribution of q bar so then let us think a little bit graphically here so here's our our q bar our q bar and under the null hypothesis that will be centered around zero so let me just say that is assuming h naught is correct so the question is now what type of values for that sample mean would make us reject the null hypothesis well, when we think about p-values, we said, well, if the p-value is smaller than 1%, then we would reject the null hypothesis. So let's, let's think about what type of value of q-bar would produce a p-value smaller than 1%. 
So I'm going to use different colors. So we're taking this 1% and we're saying, okay, we're having a left tail test. So we are worried about small values of Q bar. So we need to find that value of Q bar that cuts off 1% of the distribution. So that is the value which we want. Because if we get a Q bar which is smaller than that value, then we will reject H0. However, if we get a Q bar that is larger than that, then we will not, so do not reject H0. So we sometimes call this area here the rejection region. Okay, so now how do we calculate that? Well, what we need to do is we need to figure out, we know we don't have a table that gives us the normal distribution with mean 20 and variance 0 0.5, but we can figure out which Z value, which Z value gives us a probability that the value beyond that Z0 or smaller than that Z0 is 1%. So if you go to the table, you will find that the prob it is the probability that Z is smaller or equal to negative 2.33. So you can read that from the normal probability table is 1%. So that means we will use our translation formula from Z to Q bar in reverse. So we know that the Z value is negative 2.33 and we want to know which is the let's call it q bar zero which gives us that set value now our translation formula will use that mean so q bar zero minus 20 and it will use the standard error which is the square root of this so square root of 0.15 okay so if you calculate that so we can now solve that, of course, for Q bar. That's just a simple uh, equation. Let me do that here. Okay, so we get negative 2.33 times square root of 0.15 is equal to Q bar zero minus 20. And therefore, Q bar zero is equal to 20, we'll bring the 20 on to the other side, minus 2.33 times the square root of 0 0.15. And if you calculate that, what you get is 19.0976. That means this is our value here. Nineteen point oh nine seven six. So if we get a value smaller than that value, we will reject. If not, we will not reject. So therefore, our decision rule is reject H naught if our sample mean is smaller than nineteen point. 0976. So you can write down this decision rule without actually knowing what the sample mean is. I haven't told you what the sample mean is. Now, depending on what the actual sample mean is, you will then make your decision. Let's say it is 19.2. Third color. So let's say it's 19.2. 19.2 would be around here. That means in this case, we would not reject. Of course, if the sample mean was say 18.9, we would be to the left of our critical value and uh, we would reject. So sometimes this value here is called the critical value.